Maybe you want to say something about those? Uh, yeah, uh, we we basically completed it yesterday and uh, shared a little bit on the community call yesterday as well. Um, basically, it's a SDK now we have inside of uh, the wallet, which makes people able to interface with uh, the Pocket ecosystem in a really streamlined way. We took a lot of inspiration from MetaMask's uh, SDK and basically just wanted to apply that same kind of uh, coachability to interfacing with Pocket, uh, bring it to the Pocket network. So, yeah, it, it you know, one of the kind of most notable features, at least in the short term, is node providers could actually use it to add staking buttons to their websites. Um, it just, uh, it makes it super easy for node runners to pre-populate a transaction that then all they do is click accept inside the node wallet. Uh, and you know they're now they have a new customer, so it just makes the process a lot easier than sharing keys and all that stuff that a lot of people had to do before. Awesome, cool. Um, okay, and then uh, I guess team's still kind of trying to figure out exactly when we'll get the green light for mainnet, but soon. Um, yeah, it I is we're, two we're... factors, right? Uh, one of them is enough validators need to have upgraded. Uh, we are waiting for the numbers to go over uh, six, seven percent, and okay. then um, yeah, we will have to talk with uh, PNF and agree on a date, and we will probably turn the features on one by one, as opposed to all of them at the same time. Uh, it's a, a their practice to you know, go safely. Uh, one quick correction, though. Uh, the build is 11.1. .1. So if there are any yeah, node so runners funny. on this call, I'm sure they are. <laughs> Don't upgrade to the older version. Use a new version. 11.1. .1. Okay, I'll make that edit um, on here uh, before we share it out. Thank you. Okay. Of course, we are, we are very excited. Uh, there are big changes coming. Um, I think it is uh, one of the biggest, if not the biggest, consensus breaking roll up in V0 history. Uh, there were other changes, like client was a big change, your image was a big change, but they weren't consensus breaking. Uh, these are. So, uh, but they are important changes. We are excited. They are going to take us all the way to V1, we hope. All right, on. Cool. I uh, live editing. It's like well, hot fixes. Hot fixes. And then, all right. Very good. All right. Thanks, guys. All right. Um, on the Shannon side. <clears throat> so this week, uh, if you didn't catch it, uh, the full roadmap was disclosed. And if you, when we share this out, if you click through um, to the new docs and in uh, section, uh, all of the information is there. But the probably the best thing there is the link to the U to YouTube, which is the meeting in which Olshansky from the core dev team um, it basically introduces it, talks about it. It's about a 20 minute call. It's uh, our section of the, that call. Um, really good. So you can kind of get an insider view of what's going on. Um, so that is all there. Um, a couple of weeks ago, we told you that where uh, we we want to get this thing called the SMT audited. Um, what's happening there is ultimately uh, we as, as we started reviewing proposals, we did like two waves of proposals. We had like over ten by the time we uh, we were done. Um, is that we decided that like a one off audit while effective if you only need to do one thing um actually didn't make a lot of sense for us because we have like several things that we need to do leading up to mainnet uh so we started talking about more about like security and audit partnership opportunities with the teams that we were the most interested in working with uh so the conversation has gotten a little wider in scope i won't call it creep but um but it just makes sense not only for us because uh, it, it drives the cost per audit down, um, but it also introduces a whole bunch of other 
uh, opportunity to co-market around uh, a security partnership, uh, as well as, uh, you know, the team just ends up learning about our project much more deeply uh, and gives us like uh, insider scheduling and all kinds of other good stuff. So we're moving in that direction now. And uh, these are the other projects that are now in scope. Um, you guys know we've got the Rat Pocket Bridge, so we do need to we we need a, a path to migrate to the roll up. Um, more state needs to be migrated, and and maybe right. So I think that's a, a, a big conversation for the community that we're going to look for feedback on. And PNF and the core dev team need to make some decisions around that. Um, and then you know the 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 POC roll repo itself. There are other pieces there that are novel and new that we definitely want uh, an auditor to take a look at. So we're expanding scope. Um, these three teams had the best proposals and have the highest interest in doing the partnership with us. So it's informal systems very well known in the cosmos ecosystem uh zelic who are also working with some of the teams that we're working with uh and and thesis defense which is actually a newer team that came out of least authority and they have relationships um with actually some of the uh, like brian from the core dev team uh was very familiar with them used to be an auditor himself so uh there are top three right now and we're in like our final rounds of like negotiating what that uh in, what, what these engagements will look like uh, and we hope to make a decision on all of this uh, by the end of the day tomorrow, uh, and then we will we will community out like some columns around all that nature of the um, you know uh, proposals and all that sort of stuff, uh, and and share that with you all. But that's the direction it's going, and um, it 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 just makes a lot of sense kind of across the board um, for us to kind of go that way. Cool. Um, and then you may recall, if you were here last time, that we also had a couple of calls to action. Um, Celestia Archive node running, uh, which is really uh, the data availability um, full storage node. Um, so we got uh, a bunch of feedback from, from teams. Uh, so thank you who, uh, for the people that raised their hand on that. Um, where we've got a, a grant proposal underway uh, that we're on. And we're going to submit that to Celestia to help us bootstrap some of the early teams to get the, the, the to get the chain up. Um, yeah, and so we'll see. We're going to wrap that up also within the next couple of days. Um, and that's been a group effort around that. Uh, and then QSpider, thanks for taking on the Block Explorer evals. Like, he raised his hand for that, joined the engineering call last week. By the way, if you haven't caught this yet, the two time a week engineering calls are now open for anybody that's curious to join. Um, I won't name times because I'm in CET and I don't know that it makes sense, but like um, they happen on Tuesdays and Fridays uh, and you can get to them if you join Grove's server, uh, their Discord. Maybe Zach or somebody can drop a invite to the Grove server. But if you're curious about that and you ever want to just get under the hood with the team, um, join the call. Like it's now like it's it's out there, and we've seen people like Ian and Shane, and I think even I've seen some other faces on here pop into those occasionally. Um, you can come and check them out. Yeah. Um, so th that's great. Uh, Thanks, Zach. Um, and then, you know, this meeting is going to take on a slightly different look and feel going forward. Um, uh, and so we're, you know, very interested in volunteers from the community that have things that they would want to, uh, to do that. So please reach out to Zach and to Shane, which is a nice intro into what we're going to talk about next. Uh, before we move on to the next section, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So this is a um, screencast, right? The links don't work. Uh, are you going to share the slides? Uh, for example, the Shannon roadmap. Uh, where is the link? How do we click on that? Yeah, 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 yeah. For sure. Like, so all of these uh, will drop. All these links will will drop. Yeah, and and, and there's a uh, there's a page on the new document site which is where that links to. So we can just drop that link and you can you can jump over there. Yeah. I think it's yes, please do. Text. So it's gonna be great if we have like one landing page for PNF 
which is the authoritative source for all the other documents. Because I've seen, you know, Shannon roadmaps. I don't know which one is the latest or greatest, you know. Yeah, you yeah, can this is definitely the greatest. Complete. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, uh, here, I'll, I'll click through. It's date stamped and uh, this will wear if you, if you want to follow along um, with everything that is going on. Uh, you will want to come here. Uh, this is docs.talk.network forward slash Shannon forward slash roadmap. Um, we'll drop that, here we go, into the meeting chat. Uh, Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Yep, yep, yep. Good question. Oh, somebody beat me to it. Thank you. Um, and, yeah, so uh, all things here. Uh, this will give you all the stuff that's coming. Um, and then, like I said, you can click through uh, to the recording right there. And that'll take you over to YouTube, and then there, the other bigger presentation uh, and is there as well. Um, so yeah, all, all all the links, and then this will we'll keep date stamping this uh, as we make updates, so you can see the history and and you know you're looking at the golden copy basically. Oh. Let's see. Can I get back to? to here, share this tab instead. We're back. Cool, any other questions about any of this stuff? Uh, audits, any of the other action items before I move on? All right, cool. Um, all right, so some exciting announcements. Um, so I uh, I will be rolling off of PNF uh, as of the 31st, which will be next Wednesday. So this is my last uh, builder call as the host of the builder call. You may see me on builder calls in the future, but it will be on the other side of the coin as a builder. Um, so yeah, um, and Shane, who a lot of you know from the community because he's been around a while, um, is going to join PNF and is going to pick up uh, a couple of the things that I was doing that are more community focused. Not everything. It's not a full refresh of a, a product lead position, but um, yeah, we just kind of looked at it going into 2024 about what we really needed to keep uh, keep pushing the envelope on the project. Um, and, uh, yeah, so we're making some changes kind of across the board and you've heard, you've heard of some of the other ones with like Jack kind of rolling back a little bit and new directors coming in things like that. So we're just kind of like changing up the composition a little bit. Um, but like, it's been great. I wanted to thank like everybody that's been coming to these and has been helping me, uh, during my six months here at pocket. It feels like it's been way longer than that. Um, but like I said, I'll, I'll stick around the community and probably end up a builder like you all. Uh, so yeah, so it's been great. Um, and yeah, you're in good hands. Uh, team's, team's awesome. <clears throat> and then I'll, uh, turn it over to Shane. I'm sure he wants to say something. Yeah, uh, yeah. Thank you for teeing me up. And you know, just to reiterate, I'm not a, I, I guess you would say like Mateo replacement. Um, I'm there's a lot of areas that uh, you know I'm not going to be directly involved in. Uh, I am coming in more on a, uh, well, really, what it is is PNF. You know, knows my interest in uh, uh, Shannon and participating in you know community events and. Uh, participating on forums and discussions around economics or around, uh, you know, kind of protocol design. So the idea is just allow me to kind of do it in a way that uh, allows me to pursue my natural interests, but then, you know, do it in a way that hopefully enables more people to get involved, enables more people to learn about what uh, what is actually being built. Uh, so open up more community opportunities while opening up more uh, just general knowledge opportunities as well within the ecosystem, especially with a lot of the cool stuff that that Shannon is bringing. So, um, yeah, so I'm not coming in like directly like PNF, like I'm not like joining the board or, you know, anything like that. Uh, it's more I'm working with PNF kind of in a uh, in a joint role as uh, this kind of 
I guess, community arm of uh, of the Shannon team. So that's, uh, you know, while also participating in other, uh, you know, other elements where I can help PNF in. So really excited, uh, super, super excited about this. Um, you know, it's nice to kind of have a natural passion of mine, be able to be something that can be utilized uh, kind of in a more formal, uh, more formal environment. So really excited. Um, this, you know, uh, puts me in a place where if people have questions about, you know, Shannon or things of that nature, I might not know everything. I, you know, I, I, I do really well with understanding a lot of things, but I might not have answers on absolutely everything, but kind of part of my role is to be a little bit of the, uh, be, be a bit of a, an answerer and a kind of contact point for people that have questions about the protocol or, uh, and want to get involved in the protocol or, uh, you know, what are interested in opportunities in the protocol, uh, once it launches, I'm trying to be a bit of a community contact point for that. So the Shannon developers can continue focusing on the ones and zeros and I can help with, you know, really everything else. That's, that's really how folks could kind of look at this role and really excited to be working more with folks in general. Awesome. Excited for you, Shane. I think it's great. Um, you've been a really active champion of the project uh, the whole time I've seen you here from the day I joined. Uh, so it's good. I think it's a natural position for you to be in. Uh, all, you know, lots of community comms are going to it's going to be great for the for the community, actually. Um, yeah, congrats. It's going to be good. All right. Um, uh, moving on. Socket information coming up next from Zach. Bum, ba, da, bum. Um, Mateo, do you mind? I'm actually going to share because I'm going to pass it to Dan as well for. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. For... I will get out of there right now. All well, I'm going to do the. Um, I say, wow, this is a surprise. I had no idea Shane was joining PNF. This is incredible. Congratulations, Shane. Um, just kidding. I'm super stoked. Thanks, Mateo, for all that you've done for us. And and Shane, really excited to work alongside you for um, for the future here. I feel like there's there's this really obvious need for more people with some technical expertise um, like you, Shane, in the community. So stoked to work alongside you. Um, Mateo, you will be missed, but um, you know maybe we'll get to keep working alongside you uh, from the other side. So and if not, we'll see you on all the bike races. So Thanks. Get Thanks. that LLM yeah. support Thanks, yeah. ready. When is that coming? <laughs> yeah, coming soon. Um, yeah, cool. So I guess um, at this part, uh, I guess there's two things to call out. One is, you know, the builders calls will take a little bit different format going forward. So if anybody does want to help drive that or change the way it's going to be, um, reach out to me, reach out to Shane. Um, I think our next one will probably take a slightly different format and then we can iterate on it from there. And we also discussed yesterday maybe combining it with one of the ecosystem calls. Uh, so we have fewer calls in the week and we get more overlap, which I feel like this builder's call really was always intended to be how do people get information about what's going on with the protocol. And so if we're segmenting that, it, it might make more sense not to. So just some thoughts. If anybody has opinions, uh, let us know. And Harry, thanks again for sharing too that there's events in the Grove um, in the Grove Discord that we can just tune into. That might be a really nice way for us to piggyback off one of those and um, create another event. Anyways, rambling at this point, I'm gonna share my screen. Um, bum, bum, bum. All right. You guys see in the slide, even though it's not uh, pretty. Yeah, cool. So uh, I'm just gonna run through some quick updates. Everything's in the forum, so um, you know, we did make some updates to the way that sockets are like just the mechanism, the mechanisms. And the reason for this was the admin process of it is actually quite complicated because of the moving nature of the pocket token price. So we moved it to stable. So starting February one, people will be getting paid in stables instead of pocket. Um, I know that some of you were getting basically overpaid because of the lagging average, which feels really nice, but, um, going forward, if it was going the other way, uh, there's no upside to that. If you're getting paid less for the same amount of work, um, it, it just doesn't feel good. And we're going to lose people who 
you know, it might not be worth your effort if you're only getting paid a third of your socket based on today's prices. So we just want to get ahead of that, reduce the admin burden. If anybody has strong opinions, definitely DM me. Um, I don't think we're going to have any options to get paid in pocket, but all of our core contributors will continue to get paid in pocket. So um, the next step would be getting you in, in set up in a position where you're a core contributor as opposed to a socket. Uh, let's see. We also are um, coming up on the end of the month. So if you are getting a socket, please post your updates. Um, today's the 25th. I will probably review them on the Friday, which is the second. So I do want to make sure that everybody has those in either this week or next week. So that way we can review them. Uh, and then we're going to be incorporating a proof of impact kind of um, scoreboard uh, for the next version of them. But plenty to come there. Uh, what else do we want to talk about? Uh, I've mentioned bounties. We're bringing back bounties. Uh, Harry, I think you've worked a bunch with DWORK. Um, but if anybody else has any other platforms that they really love, uh, I think we're going to default to DWORK. But if you've got another one you want to throw in the mix, I'm open to it. Uh, the idea here being how do we track these bounties and make it easy to use? and not incorporate yet another platform that may or may not be deprecated in you know six months. So um, it does plug in nicely with GitHub, which makes it easy for the protocol team to create bounties. And I know that's already on your list, Harry. I think you all talked about it yesterday. So excited to help there as well. Um, I'm going to do a quick demo of the Pocket Metrics dashboard. So a quick shout out, Merdad is on this call, but Merdad and the Together Crew team um, did the work on this. So I think Together Crew did most of the front end and then Merdad's team did all of the back end and, and logic for this. So are y'all able to see it? Does it switch over to the dashboard here? Thumbs up is fine. Yep, cool. Thank you. Um, think of this as the V1. There is some information in here. Um, we've gone through to do our best to make it useful, relevant information. And it, most of it will get updated either from pocket span, scan, which comes in daily, or manually by me, which will happen usually around the 15th and the first of the month. Uh, I'd love for people to just take a peek at it. If things seem useful, call that out. If things seem not useful, call that out. Uh, and if you'd like to see things that aren't in here, also let us know. The, the team will continue to iterate on this, and we want to make it a place where we can go and just kind of see the health of both the DAO and the, the token as well. So. The one thing I do want to call out specifically for this group is at the bottom here, our era allocation. So our eras now go quarterly. So we're looking at January, February, March. And this is the amount of pocket that we have spent through January. And this is the amount total we have for the era available. doesn't mean we should spend it every month, but it does show you that we have quite a bit of additional funds to work on things. So if you have big ideas, if you want to get a team together to propose something, um, or if you just want to open more sockets because you can deliver value in areas that are not being tackled, like this is our DAO, not PNF DAO. Um, we really need help. We have a lot of ambitions. We have a lot of goals, um, and we need people to, to. We need to pay more people to do more of the work. So um, this is an opportunity and a call out for people. Like do experiments, um, pitch your ideas. Now the chains involved, we'll have a lot more technical um, oversight on some of the community sockets. So you'll be able to get answers and. Um, we'll definitely be more aligned with our DNA as, as Shane takes very seriously our open source nature. So I'm really excited to see how that moves us forward. And um, yeah, just opportunities is the TLDR. Lots of opportunities. Cool. If anybody has any feedback, again, DMs are open. There's also a forum post. All right. Uh, and cred citizenship. So many of you did the passport. Super excited. Thank you so much for contributing. Um, the next step is going to be our little onboarding, um, and I will I will ask the people that have already done the creds to join me for the onboarding journey, which will then roll out into official PDAs. And you can think of a PDA as basically like an NFT that gives you your citizenship pass. And so uh, we expect to be able to roll that out live. I mean, Meridad, not to put you on the spot, it'll probably be in two weeks when Snapshot gets back to us. But um, I think we're like pretty darn close here to being able to open up our citizenship cred, which enables a lot of cool, um, a lot of cool functionality for things like bounties and sockets going forward. I see you type in Merdad, so I'll let you weigh in over there. Just excited, probably in two weeks. Yeah, so realistically, probably the first week of February, we'll have some sort of citizenship, but um, follow along in Discord. Um, really appreciate everybody who did help us align on the passport score. 
Uh, originally, it was going to be 20, and it seems like 14 or 15 is a much better number. So we're going to try 15 unless we get some strong pushback on that. Okay, shout out to you all. And then um, I just want to also call out, here are all of our currently open sockets. Um, the prices of those, and again, just a reminder that um, kind of that $2,000 limit is kind of the, the bar of scrutiny for me, where if you're above 2000 um, you really need to be posting in your post this month of how you're driving impact, how you're measuring it, who you're helping. Um, so that way we can keep those sockets open. Uh, if you're under that 2000, you still need to post and you still need to tell us who you're, you're doing the impact on, but it's much more manageable to treat that as an experiment and give it a couple of months of runway to see if it pans out. Um, the other thing to call out here, the last piece of sockets is uh, when they were originally envisioned, they were envisioned to be a multi-month, but not forever kind of a process. And I'm seeing many sockets that are now reaching the three, four month kind of timeline. Um, I'm not sure what we're going to do about it, but at this point, people should be thinking like this experiment has kind of been run, right? Do we then pitch to become a core contributor? Do we try a different project? Like what's the evolution of that? And so just be thinking about that. If you've been running a socket for three to four months, um, what would you like to happen next? Because we're not going to keep a socket open for six or eight months. We really do need to figure out what the path to being a core part of the DAO is. So um, if that's anybody in here, which I don't actually see anybody in here is hitting that mark, but yeah, feedback and notes, always open to it. All right. Uh, yeah, and then I want to... Wanna... Oh. Uh, it'd be interesting to, uh, yeah, if, if, if we get some initial ideas down and then just put it in a proposal on, because yeah, that's an interesting thought. I, I hadn't thought of, uh, sockets, you know, technically, I guess should be kind of more, uh, uh, you know, a short term, uh, you know, a short term way to kind of quickly get onboarded. But, um, I, I've always seen sockets as not necessarily being short term. So yeah, it would make sense to kind of flesh out what that, what a, where exactly sockets uh, end, and then I guess whatever the next thing is, the core contributor part begins. Because um, I'm actually not really sure what is the process of becoming a core contributor versus, uh, I know Pocket uh, Pocket News did it, but I'm not really sure what that process is. So uh, yeah, anyways, definitely a good thought though. Agreed. And now that you have become a core part of PNF, I'm really excited to hear your thoughts and see you propose one. Wait, I have to do the work? Oh, come on. <laughs> no, but I am. But in all seriousness, Shane, it's a great idea for us to put our heads together and think about what some paths forward might be. So um, if you don't know the path, that means most people don't. Yeah, happy to flesh all that right. out with you. Great. Cool. Well, then I'm gonna I'm going to unless anybody else has thoughts. Quick pause for that. I'm gonna pass it over to Dan, who's been doing uh, he's actually been doing some work uh, originally under PNF and now under a socket um, for some community uh, community work that CoUnity is doing. So, Dan, I actually don't know if you have permission to unmute and share your screen. Do you want to see if you can do that? Let's see. Um, yeah. Yeah, it looks like I can. Great. All right, buddy, over to you. Sweet. I went ahead and just shared my entire screen because I was going to jump to a few things. Um, firstly, there is this picture here, and this is from a consulting company called Feverbee, and they do a lot of community consulting. If everyone can see this little picture here um basically on measuring different community activities and how community activities relate to attitudes and then how attitudes relate to different results that you can get within your community and this is kind of what like co-unity is a collective me peter and nick the three of us and we do a lot of different um analytical work and strategy around communities we were originally the original uh discord guru is what we used to be called was peter and we partnered up just about a year ago, and we've kind of been building out this business, and we just rebranded to CoUnity um, about a few months ago. And so I think what's really interesting is when you look at measuring some of these different community activities, such as the number of um, posts, responses, et cetera, different just metrics and things like that, 
how that can drive to attitudes and drive to the results of, I think one of the most important things would be advocacy around um, pocket network. There's a, a guy I'm a big fan of, Alex Hermosi with Marketing Sales Business Development. And in his recent book, $100 million Leads, he said that the most underrated strategy for growing you know, a brand, a company, a project, protocol, et cetera, um, is if you can get the average of your customers or your community members to refer 1.1 people, then technically you don't need you know any marketing because everyone's just word of mouth referral. And so that's kind of like, you know, obviously measuring where we're at and how we're doing with that and, and trying to drive towards um, helping pocket with it. So it's a little bit just on, on that front. And then we started a little bit of a case study um, with some metrics and whatnot. Here, I'll scroll up. And so initially when we first jumped in in October, the Discord, there was quite a few channels. There was a lot of different channels, if, if some of you guys might remember. And we did a heat map activity on every on it and saw there was like, you know, sometimes confusion on which channel is the right one to post. And one thing we wanted to improve was the new member activation. So people coming in and viewing different channels and having conversations. Um, and the Discord channel aesthetic a little bit as well, organizing it a bit. And then also getting an inclusive view of the two Telegram channels, the, the Pocto Den, the Pocto Price um, channels, trading discussion channels in, in Telegram as well as Discord. And I know the server's you know, you know, three years old, a couple of years old. And so there's been multiple owners. There's a lot of old roles and permissions that we initially spent a lot of time kind of going through and cleaning up. And so, like I said, for the solutions and some of these things, we did a lot of heat map activity on channels implemented different consolidation strategies. We added the server guide. It's cleaned up the first part of the channel structure, um, revamped a bit of the onboarding process, like improved it a little bit, made a few small changes. And we're really excited for Wonderverse coming on here too, working with um, Andrew side by side with him and the stuff that they're going to be doing with the Gitcoin Passport and Cred stuff. So that's going to be exciting. Um, and then, yeah, fresh paint, different channel names, banner images adjusted. Um, and then, yeah, I've been doing weekly analytics reports now as a part of the socket here. And so some of those results when we first started, some of the things we're really measuring closely is these orange and gray lines. So I'm going to explain this. So the orange line is the percent of new members who communicated by sending more than three messages or joining in a voice chat on their first day in the server. That's what like Discord can track easily in their Discord Insights dashboard which is a pretty big activation in my opinion for someone to join a server and then send three plus messages. Um, like that's, you know, a lot of time I'll join a server and, you know, drop a GM or say something, but mostly just kind of lurk around, but to have 5% of these 213 people uh, in October who joined basically, um, like, you know, contribute a message of some sort or ask a question or start to to jump in and then have that go up in November to 11% and then all the way up to 14% um, in December with, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a good one there. I mean, that's seven out of every 50 people roughly just to kind of give you an idea for it. Now, the gray line is people who just view different channels and areas. So they were more of like the ones who are a little more on like the under trying to understand things, lurking a little bit, learning, whatever, um, 33%, 37%, and then 30, yeah, 37%. Um, yeah, so it's kind of interesting. This is the type of thing to really track because like, especially I'm really interested now that we have really good benchmarking and seeing we're at month to month as we bring in, you know, Wonderverse, as we start some credentialing and things like that. You know, how will that impact, you know, I know there's another socket on educating people and different marketing efforts. And when people come into the discord now from some of these marketing campaigns, like where will the effect of some of these, you know, um, education things um, and other things that we're trying to implement and do, like how will it affect these metrics? So as soon as something launches on the day to day, you know, this is the kind of month macro view, but on the day to day, do we have a really big spike in people, you know, having more conversations as soon as they come into the channel? to drive those different metrics that we're looking for, like that would be, you know, a really, really good sign. Um, yeah. And then also obviously is like retention itself. We went even backwards and looked at retention. So basically retention is showing the percentage of the new members who remain active beyond their first day. Um, it's a two week lagging metric. So they come back into the 
uh, server like the following the following week. And you can see like a pretty big dip here going into like the holidays with Christmas and everything, which makes a lot of sense. Um, but yeah, I'm going to update this chart. This is a, a case study chart up until January. If there's a uh, link to a Google Drive in my socket forum that has everything kind of live. Um, but yeah, definitely. And then, you know, this is just some of like the prep work that we do on the back end. We organize our documents in Coda, organize channels, the status of where they're at. Um, and this is like, this is the onboarding right now process. But, you know, obviously with coming in now with Wonderverse, it's going to be really cool to see a native experience to do different things. And there's the server guide. If you guys weren't aware, we, there was a lot of channels at the top of the community here on the left. And we rolled these all up into the server guides so that all the information, if you're looking for things, a lot of it's linked up here with the server rules, resources, and frequently asked questions and whatnot. Um, but uh, yeah, and then I guess super quickly, if you want to see too, like this is the spreadsheet. I'm not sure, did that switch to Chrome? All good? No one, if no one says anything, I'm going to say all good. All good. Um, so this is like the week to week Google sheet that I have that's linked in the forum. And there's like the monthly roll up here. And then what you can also see is each uh, tab here for the combination of like, this is the um, Pocto price, like the trading discussion channel. You can see the messages per week. Um, I also was highlighting like the top messenger and man, like Jinx, the dude is... I mean, everyone, I think, has so much respect for him in the community, the way that he runs those Telegram channels, both the Poctoprice and the Poctopus uh, Den. It's definitely amazing, like 343 messages in one week, just in this one. And then the other one, you know, 64 messages in just like the more casual Poctopus Den. And sometimes, you know, I was looking at potentially highlighting some some good banter from some of these discussions because, you know, it's cool. This is a very, very technical project, obviously, but reading through all the conversations it's fun that everyone has a little bit of like a little bit of, you know, a little bit of gifs, a little bit of like jokes and whatnot. It keeps it, keeps it lighthearted. Um, and yeah, definitely. And then combined messages and whatnot. I think one thing to highlight here, it's one of the highest combined messages just last week compared to the last week of November. Um, as well as the discord analytics, there's two, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, really there's two listing exchanges. Crypto.com There's an organic one. And then Bitbuy. And so there's 340 new members that dropped into the server from that, which was almost as much the entire month of December. So pretty massive spike up from, you know, just engagement from that, which is really cool to see. But uh, yeah, and there's the percent communicated and visited on the weekly basis and the retention with the two week lagging metric. The retention is the highest it's been. Um, since we started measuring things too, we hit 20%, which is awesome because that's um, one of the benchmarks that they set as a honestly, generally a pretty optimistic goal. We do work with analytics and a lot of other servers and getting to 20% above 20% is um, some of the highest that we've ever done. So super exciting that people are really amped on everything going on with the ecosystem. I know I myself personally am also super stoked on everything going on with Pocket. Um, Currently based out of Mexico City and went to dinner with some people, tell them a bit about it. They didn't take uh, cash and you know how it goes in a foreign country, you run out of cash. And so I ended up um, paying back the guy who paid in like in, in pocket. <laughs> so, you know, getting people, getting people on board and aware and, and whatnot. So, yeah, just if uh, I've tried to go pretty quick through a lot of things. If anyone has additional questions or things, also like feel free to. Have me a friend request or DM me or anything if you want specific stuff or if there's any questions here right now too. Happy to dive into anything. But uh, yeah, there's a quick run through on analytics. Thanks, Dan. Yeah, that was great. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Really appreciate it. And just a, um, a reminder for everybody, Dan does have a socket for analytics and is updating it. I think you're actually updating it about weekly here. So um, if you do want to jump into the forum and see more about it, or everybody has a Discord uh, channel now. I'll just link to Dan's here. If you do want to chat with him about anything going on, uh, you can do that there. And I think with that, unless anybody has any questions, it's kind of open floor. 
Mateo, I don't know if you or Shane, if you have anything else you'd like to chat through. Uh, yeah, nothing, nothing specific on my end. No. All right, folks. We'll pass it back to you, Mateo. Wrap it up. Yeah. All right. So, uh, I guess I won't see you, but the team will in a couple of weeks. And uh, yeah, again, thank you all very much for having me. Um, see you on the other side. Yeah, big shout out to Mateo, everyone. Thank you, thank you. Cheers. Thanks, everybody. See you next week.